we're going to start off with doing the two ply system. We're going to start off with a nailable base sheet. What I want to do is, is I want to stagger the laps so that they don't build up. So what I've done here is, is I've snapped the line on the base sheet so that I'm going to start off with a two thirds. So we're going to cut that off. Now with the installation of this on the base sheet, we want to make sure that we actually wrap our deck. We want the base sheet to go down over the front edge. We want the base sheet to go down over the side edge between an inch and a half and two inches. Now the nailing pattern on this, on the centers of the sheets are two rows, 18 inches staggered when you're doing the full sheets and you're going to do a nine inch on the head laps. So we're going to use these and I'm just going to put one row right down the middle and then my metal. I'm going to wrap the edges on the ends so that everything wraps all the way around. On the base sheet we have, we typically run with the three inch lap. We have a two inch and a three inch, but we typically run with the three. Go ahead and pull it roll tight and get all the wrinkles out. Just want to snug it up. Now I'm going to let those kind of warm out in the sun and relax. I'm going to go back and I'm going to do the laps in the center on this. So this is why I said 18 inches on center staggered. Now we're going to come back and we're going to get the lap. And this one here is 9 inches on center, not the 18. Now if you actually drag your feet when you're doing these, you can actually pull the wrinkles out as you go. So we're going to go back and try to catch all the laps now. When I started this, I started it with a two-thirds so that we could actually break up the lap so they didn't lap over. So now I'm going to take the piece that I'd cut off. I'm going to finish this up here with, we want to go up a minimum of 18 inches or at least three shingle courses, whichever, whichever is greater. Okay, now we're up at least a minimum of over 18 inches. So now we can actually start to do the two-ply system. Now what we're doing with a base and a cap, we're actually going to run a 9-inch target sheet. We're going to run it around the perimeter of the roof. Because when you install your metal, you want your metal not to be on the base sheet. It needs to be on a ply. So we're going to use a mid-ply. Now these rolls are approximately 39 inches, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in half twice and then I'm going to cut my strips. Now that's one way of doing it. It'll leave a mark and you can you'll be able to see where your half inch where your middle of your sheet is. It'll be right close to the, your center line. Now I'm going to kind of show you another way you can do it too. When you're cutting this you can go ahead and fold this one in half. And that's going to give you approximately nine inches. It'll be anywhere between nine and a half and almost ten. Now you can take this piece and you can make a mark. So you're going to take this target sheet, you're going to line it up along the bottom edge. And what we want to be careful to do is we don't want to stick it over. We want it to be a little bit behind so that when you put your metal on, it doesn't interfere with it. Now at this point on a two-ply system, you could roll this back lightly scar this film, pull it off, and go ahead and roll this into place. Now once you have all that in place, you can go ahead and cut your metal, you can put your mastic down and get it all nailed in place. Then your cap sheet goes on, starting with a full, and it'll bring you out here to the middle, staggers all your laps, that's a standard 12-year system. Now that I've showed you how to do the two-ply system, we're going to move on and I'm going to show you how to do the three-ply system. Now what I'm going to use is a mid-ply. When I put this mid-ply on, this is actually going to be a 20-year system. Now the, the mid-ply is actually a one-square roll, and our ply base is a two-square roll. So that's the difference in the two. And one of them is polyester. This one is polyester reinforced. It has a little bit more flexibility, and it's a little tougher. Now again, so that we don't, we don't build up our laps, I started off with the two-thirds on the, on the base sheet, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a half on this sheet, 
and that will stagger my laps so that they all don't build up in one location. Now again, like I demonstrated on the target sheet for the two-ply system, we're going to push this forward, but we want to stop before we get to the edge. We, we don't want it to go all the way over. Make sure you don't move your sheet, and then go ahead and just back roll this a little bit. Get it about halfway or so. Now be careful when you do this that you don't scrape it too hard. It doesn't take much to cut through this, this film. You can pull this loose and then go ahead and roll it out a little ways. Now once you've got it stuck, you can go ahead and bring it out the rest of the way. You can just pull it low and slow. Once you've got this set, you want to roll it in place. So typically you'll start in the middle and kind of roll it around the edges. You can see that my laps are staggered to where they're not all going to build up. Then I can go back to a full. Again, we're going to want to get our three inch lap, so I'm just going to make a mark at a couple places and then just roll it out. Now I showed you on that first piece how we just scarred the film on the back side and then went ahead and back rolled it and rolled it in. Now I'm going to show you a different way that you can do it. You have a two ply release film on this sheet where you can pull it apart. So what we're going to do, again, you're going to want to make sure that you don't move it, but you can pick up the back side keep it in one place. Now you can take this take this sheet and pull it off. And you can roll this into place. I'm just kind of walking it down so that I know that it's not going to move. And then we'll do the other side. And again, just roll it into place. Grab the roller and do the same thing again. Kind of work it out a little bit. Now where I tie these two together, I'm going to show you what we call a T-seam relief cut. What we're trying to do here, these are modified materials, so they have a small, they have a memory. So anytime you do a 90 degree angle like this, a lot of times they have a tendency to want to pop up, create a little fish mouth, and then suck water inside. So we're actually going to cut this off a little bit on this corner. And typically what we do is, is about three by five. So you come over this way about three inches up here about five, and you'll cut that loose. Now as I install the next sheet, you'll see it'll start sealing way back here and then it has this whole transition to seal in and it'll seal a little bit better. Now the transition on here is a minimum of six inches. I usually do a little bit more, anywhere from eight to 12. And that's your standard T-seam that you're gonna do when you tie your sheets on. Now the only part you really wanna pay attention is that you get this a good seal down here and make sure it's sealed good. And then we'll go ahead and put on our other piece, go up to our 18 inch mark right here, and then our inner ply will be complete. The metal needs to be, in the book it actually says 26 gauge galvanized G90 coated, which is what we recommend to do this with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I actually wrap the corners and, and set this in place. Once I get this cut and set in place, then we're going to pick it up and I'm going to mastic it all down and then install the metal. Now I'm going to round the corners on these a little bit just so that they don't dig into the into the base sheet or the or the ply sheet. And give a small relief cut on the back side. It'll help this bend a little better. We're going to do the same. I'm going to dry set this piece as well, just so you get an idea of of where it's all going to go. We want a minimum of a four inch lap, so I'm going to kind of get an idea where that's at. Now to make sure these all sit down good, a lot of times when you're doing a 90, you might have to bend these just a little past 90 so that they'll sit tight up against the fascia board. Now that I have all these pieces set, I'm going to go ahead and remove them all. I'm going to run a bead of mastic in underneath all the metal and then I'm going to nail the metal. The flint bond is what I used. A lot of guys will use a three, gallon, a three gallon bucket. As you can see, I just ran a couple of beads across here. So the mastic you want to put on is about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch thick. Now that we got all that on, we'll go ahead and put the first couple pieces of metal on. I'll usually start from the middle out so that if I had any wrinkles in the metal, I'll push the wrinkles out at either end. Now you see why when I, I bent that metal a little tighter than 90 so that I can pull that up tight and then the metal sits tight against the fascia board there. I like to put a little mastic in between the metal here. This is the most vulnerable part of the roof once you get it all done. 
are the corners. Okay, now that I've got all the metal tacked in place and I've got it set in mastic, now I'm going to go back and do the nailing six inches on center, two rows, staggered. So in essence, you're going to be putting them three inches on center. Now the second row, I'm going to stay in about an inch, inch and a half from the outside edge. It is a lot of nails and a lot of people don't want to do it, but here's the deal behind it all. Is, is that the metal has a high expansion and contraction rate in the sun. So if you just put a, a nail every 12 inches, that metal will actually, will actually stretch in the heat and shrink in the cold and it'll break the roof loose after a few years. Now we're going to primer the metal before we put down our cap sheet. This is actually flint prime. You can get it in a gallon can like this. Cheap little throwaway brush works real well. This stuff will go a long ways. And it doesn't take a long time for it to dry if it's really hot outside. Now one of the things I like about this primer is it's not an asphalt base, it's actually a water-based primer so it's easy to clean up if you spill it. Another thing is, is that when it dries, it dries kind of a light blue or kind of a grayish color. So if you get it on the face of the metal, it's not as obvious as, as the asphalt primer. This is brand new metal and I'd already, I've already cleaned this before I got started. But if you have an oily residue on the metal, or let's say if you use even a painted metal, you're going to want to clean it first. A little water and vinegar works real well. If you have a painted metal, I recommend that you actually scuff it a little bit with, with a rough sandpaper. Okay, we got all the primer on now, and as you can see, you just basically look to see that it's tacky. Now we're going to do the cap sheet. We staggered all these laps earlier so that nothing would line up. And as you can see, when I set this down, this is going to come up middle of the, of the second layer of ply sheet. I like to roll them out a little ahead of time, give them time to warm up, relax. They lay a lot better that way. Unless it's really, really hot outside. If, if the temperature's probably in the 90s or the 100s, keeping them in the shade, keeping them rolled up is probably better. I like to stick it over, but it's actually an installer preference at that point. I'll stick it over a little bit so that I can make sure that it's sealed good, then I'll cut it off later. And once I've got that on there, I like to go back and make sure that it's got a good seal. So I'll actually walk it down the edges. When you're lining up this sheet right here, you can see there's a release film on here. You want to pull your, your salvage sheet back here, the release strip, pull it back so you can actually see and then go ahead and line it up right at the granule line or just onto the granule line. Now that we've got this one folded back, you want to leave this release film on until you get your sheet set so you keep your lap nice and clean. Now that'll seal really well it's like contact cement. Both those surfaces are sticky, so they're going to go together quite well. This is a butt roll of the first roll, so we're actually going to utilize this. Again, just go ahead and hold your release film back so you can see your edge and go ahead and pull it to where it's even with the granules or just a little bit onto the granules. Okay, I'm actually going to pull this release film. I'm just going to cut it right here real easy so that I can lap that on and leave that other release sheet on there until I get the next ply in. Now again, we're going to do, like I showed you earlier on the base sheet, we're going to do a T-seam cut. So the same concept applies on the cap sheet. Actually, it's even more important on the cap sheet than it is on the ply because it's actually in the weather. You're going to go three inches back this way, five inches up this way approximately. We're going to cut that loose. Okay, now this is one of the most important parts of the roof is the T-seam where we're actually doing granule to granule. So anytime you're doing this product granule to granule, you want to you want to mastic everything together. You want to use a flint bond, an SBS mastic. The minimum lap is six inches. Now again on the T-seam, we're going to want to do it on the top course, the same as we did on the bottom course. So when my next ply comes in, it's actually going to have the same relief cut as below. And what I'm going to do here is I want to leave the release film on here until I get ready to put the mastic on. So I'm actually going to take and, and cut this a little bit so that when I take it off, that piece will stay. Okay, now I can set this back. I left that release film on there so nothing would stick. It wouldn't get granules all over it. 
Now I can mastic this piece right here. I can take the release film off and then I can set it in mastic. The same concept with this as we did with the metal. You want about an eighth of an inch, a quarter inch of mastic. You actually want it to go a little bit onto your base sheet and then, and then all, all of it onto your cap sheet. Now once you get this in, you don't want to put a lot of pressure on it, but you do want to go along and kind of make sure that it seals really good right on the edge. And if you do get a bleed out on here where you see the where you see the mastic come through, we have color matching granules you can get. You can go ahead and you can sprinkle the granules on there and make it look nice. Now what I want to show you is we have two different transitions, one for the, one for the two ply and one for the three ply. So once we got the cap sheet on the two ply system, like I was saying earlier, the two ply system, we're going to run the cap sheet up 18 inches or at least three quarters of the shingles, whichever is greater. Once we get that piece on, then we're going to put our cap flashing in, which is a 14 inch piece. We're going to do six inches on the deck, and then we're going to do eight inches up the transition. And that transition cap sheet will actually be set in mastic. Now when you're doing a three ply system, what we do is I'm going to take and I'm going to stop my cap sheet right here at the break. Then I'm going to snap a chalk line. I'm going to, I'm going to do six inches of flint bond along, along that line. So then we're going to go up eight inches and that's our transition. Then our shingles will come down, ice and water shield, diamond deck, and the shingles will go over that. Now I've already snapped the line on this. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go ahead and cut. I've got a measurement of a 10 inches from here to here. So I've already snapped the line. We're going to cut it. Again, I want to make sure I get these lined up good. Earlier when we were talking about a two-ply system where we only done a nine-inch target sheet around and set the metal and mastic, and you're doing that system, you're actually going to bring your, your cap flashing is actually going to be granuled all the way up into here. So you would actually mastic the whole 14 inches in. So I've kind of demonstrated that here. On the three-ply system, all we have to do is, is bring our sheet at the break and then we want six inches onto the granules. So everywhere you lap onto granules, you want to make sure you get your flint bond, your SBS mastic. So basically that's what I've got here. So we're going to finish getting the, mast the mastic, the flint bond in here. Now when you're doing such a large piece where you're actually doing it to keep from getting messy, you actually kind of need somebody to help you fly it in. So we're going to cut the piece and then we're going to fly this in, set it in. So let's fly this thing in. Pull her tight. Line it up in the center first. Hold, hold that up. Put it down on your mastic right on the chalk line. There you go, right there. Now that's pretty much our completed deck right there. Now I always go back and I cut these loose. And we're done, except for the shingle tie-in. Okay, so the first thing we want to make sure you do is have your, your starter course run about two inches up off your transition. And you want to use your, uh, your underlayment, either your diamond deck or your roofer select, four inches up from the transition. And we're going to use plastic cap nails to uh, install the uh, underlayment. And you always want to try to nail in the, uh, the diamonds. Next thing we're going to do is put down our uh, twist start starter shingles. Again, they, you want those to be two inches up from the transition. First thing you need to do is break the uh, shingles in half. So on the first one, what you want to do is cut off six inches off the left-hand side. Nice straight cut. Okay, on the end here, we normally uh, overhang the roofing just a little bit. I usually take a starter and get, get a straight edge. And we do this on both sides. I think now we're ready to uh, demonstrate on how to put the, uh, the landmark shingles on. We're going to demonstrate the five course pattern. So you always start with a full. What I like to do is cut, cut my shingles first and you want to cut them as straight as possible. We want to uh, cut one six inches and you never waste those pieces because I'll show you how those go on here in just a second. And 11 inch. So you're going to want to run this first course. Again, full shingle. 
along the bottom of your starter course. And then we have a nail line here. You don't want to go any higher than the top line, any lower than the bottom line. Ideal is right in between the two, the two lines. Four nails per shingle. We're going to go for the second course. Now this is the course I cut six inches off of. And it, you want to install it five and five eighths from the bottom. But since my gun won't work there, we know this is five and five eighths. So we'll line that up. Okay, now we're going to the third course. This is the one that I cut 11 inches off of. Putting it up there and this is where we like to gauge it, five and five eighths. Now, this is why we didn't throw these pieces away because we're gonna use these now. So we're gonna take the 11 inch course and go here. And our fifth and final course is that six inch piece we cut off. Okay, we got our book in. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start uh, roofing across the roof. And these are gonna all be full shingles. Line them up straight with your starter course. Nail in your nail line, four nails. Okay, what we would do here is if our roof continued up, we would just start again with a full shingle. But since that's all the space we got, we're gonna head back down here onto the bottom and just do her again. Okay, that's uh, how we install the Landmark 5-course pattern.